The background probably looks a little bit different today.
But now the last part to decorating the bookshelf is to put on the fairy lights. And I don't know why, but I just really love when my bookshelf has fairy lights on it. It makes me so happy. Let's plug this bad boy in. So now it is time for the tour of the bookshelf. I will tour this and then also my classics over there. And I guess I should start by saying, hello MTV, welcome to my crib. <laughs> That is definitely code for I am way too tired after organizing the bookshelf, but I am excited to show you how I have organized it. This top shelf is a little bit of a mess, but over here we have a couple of fantasy books and then the paranormal books. And then over here in the end we have a rom-com and there is another rom-com there, but my mom is currently borrowing it. That's what this side, so side one, shelf one looks like. Then side one, shelf two, is some more fantasy. Well, yeah, this one's fantasy. And then we start the sci-fi, and then we go back to fantasy. Hey guys, how did I organize this shelf? <laughs> this is not good, oh my gosh. <laughs> but it's staying, it's staying, and I'll get used to it. And then I organize my bookshelf, like, literally every three months. So we'll have another video and another organization pretty soon. <laughs> Anyways, moving on with our topsy-turvy bookshelf, we have the fantasy. We have more fantasy. For some reason, this series by Sarah J. Mass, Throne of Glass, is not up with the Accord of Thorns and Roses series. It just, it just is that way. <laughs> and next down here, we have some more hardcore sci-fi. I think this entire shelf is sci-fi. So at least I got this one right. And then I have all the series kind of in order. So this book, like this book is the first book and then it goes on for each series here. I've actually gotten comments before in TikToks and YouTube videos that my books and like the behind me are not in the right order for the series. And people really seem to care about that. Honestly, my bookshelf gets messed up a lot because I'm constantly pulling books to make videos with them. And then I just don't always put them back right. But at least right now they're right. They might not always be right. And I will probably receive comments like that in the future but right now they're right. So I take that back. They're not actually right. When I was editing the footage, I'm like editing and making the video at the same time. But when I was editing that last clip, I realized that my fantasy books are not in the right order. So most of them are. But then the Accord of Thorns and Roses series and the, it's just the Accord of Thorns and Roses series. The series right next to it is in order. Apparently I am order challenged. It is in the right order, like the opposite way, but not in the same way as this series or this series or this series. So now we need to switch these books up. So now it's right. My name is Angela Ann and I am directionally challenged at putting series in the right order. <laughs> So then down here, we have a couple of more fantasy and then we're getting into the historical fiction and then into the nonfiction. On the bottom shelf here, we have the end of the nonfiction. And I thought on writing was a really great buffer because I haven't read it yet, but it is nonfiction. And then from there, I put all the books that I hadn't read. Usually I don't have room to put the books I haven't read, but I must have done something different with my bookshelf this time and made it more more compact because there was room to put the not read books but I wanted to have them all down by themselves on that shelf just because I think that's nicer that way. One of the things I love about this bookshelf is that there's two sides so there's this side that we just went over but then you can also kind of see this other side peeking through especially these two shelves and I really appreciate that just because it's kind of nice when I'm writing to be able to see books right there and so what I do is I put a lot of my favorite series there so, so that they inspire me when I'm writing so I can look over and see really good books in the genre that I write and it just inspires me. Hopefully someday my book will be right up there with them. The shelf in particular is the one that has a lot of books in the genres that I write. So these are a lot of my favorite contemporaries. And then these are a lot of my favorite thrillers. Then these are more contemporaries just on the end there. Again, not really sure what's going on there. I really like having both contemporaries and thrillers because the one project that I'm currently editing is a thriller. And then my other two projects are contemporaries. And a lot of these are like my favorite authors like Adam Silvera, Becky Albertalli, Leah Johnson, Crystal Sutherland. So I like having those books there. So that I can always see them when I'm writing. And then up here we have the classic Harry Potters and then the program series, which is one of my favorite sci-fi series. I have considered writing sci-fi before, so I do like having a sci-fi series there. I probably should have put more contemporaries there now that I'm looking because my contemporaries are in the shelf above, but you can't really see the shelf above because there's like this checkered thing there. But nonetheless, I digress. We have the sci-fis there now. And then these are just a couple of books as well that are, I think these are both fantasy 
fantasy. So again, with the topsy-turvy genres are odd thing here. And then up here we have some more contemporaries I love. So Jenny Han was, is one of my favorite authors. And then we have Stephanie Perkins, Anne in the French Kiss series, Every Day, Every Day, and then some John Green books and then so on and so forth. And down here in this little nook, we have some children's books. So these are some of my favorite books from when I was a child. We have The Boxcar Children, Nancy Drew. If you're reading this, it's too late. The Borrowers. And in this nooky nook, which is really hard to see, we have some books that I just don't like as much. So I put them back there like that to save space. And then we have a bunch of bookmarks. What I like about the small little nook there is that it's really easy to grab a bookmark whenever I start a book. And then also really easy to put bookmarks back there when I finish a book. Okay, so now let's move on to the desk. So as you can see, it's a lot less cluttered there. I was editing the first part of this video actually. And then up here we have our shrine to Jane Austen. So this is Pride and Prejudice, my favorite book of all time. This book is actually really cool. I really like this one. This is Pride and Prejudice in Spanish. One of my main goals, not when I started learning Spanish, because I started learning Spanish when I was six, but around like fifth or sixth grade, I made a goal to try to read in the entire novel of Pride and Prejudice in Spanish, because it's my favorite book. So I thought it would be really cool to be able to read it in two different languages. I can proudly say that I can fully understand Pride and Prejudice in both English and Spanish. This is a really random note, but if you are trying to learn a second language, reading your favorite novels that you kind of like know and have memorized, I basically have the entire plot of Pride and Prejudice memorized. Reading those types of novels in your second language is a really good way to introduce yourself to that language. I don't know where it is, but I also have The House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende in Spanish and in English. So I read it first in English and then in Spanish. So it was easier to understand because I already knew the plot a little bit. And since then I've read some novels originally in Spanish, like I've read some Louise Borges in Spanish instead of English and stuff like that, which I think is really cool, but that was really random. Let's get back to the bookshelf. So then here we have, this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling. I decided to put it up there just because it is part of the shrine to Pride and Prejudice. There's another one, it's like a Christmassy Pride and Prejudice retelling, but I haven't read it. I say I'm gonna read it every Christmas. Maybe this year at Christmas time, I actually will read it. And then here we have all the books by Jane Austen. I put them in order. So like this one's my favorite, second favorite, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth favorite. And then here we just have a copy of Emma, another copy of Pride and Prejudice. This was actually the first Jane Austen book I ever owned, this particular copy. And then here I also just have the minor works by Jane Austen, which is a really great little collection. We kind of have our female powered classics. So we have a giant, not a giant, but a Margaret Atwood section here. We also have The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood over here. And then we have my collection of Edith Wharton novels. So this one is The Customs of the Country and other classic novels by Edith Wharton. So I really like this giant collection of novels. And then I have a little short story collection by Edith Wharton, The Age of Innocence, which is one of my favorite novels of all time. And then Ethan Fromm, also by Edith Wharton. And then up here, we have a lot of other classics. So this author right here, I really like her, but I didn't know if I should put her in classics or contemporary because she is still alive, but I think her books are very important and just as important as something by like Albert Camus or Charlotte Bronte. So it's Chimran and Ngozi Adichie, a really great author from Nigeria. Isabel Allende is one I always debate putting up here too, but I currently have Isabel Allende down in the contemporary section, though she might move up here eventually because she also is still alive, like Chimran and Ngozi Adichie, but I feel like she's a very important author. Next, we have the Albert Camus, and then we go over and you can see like, I just did it in alphabetical order, Ernest Hemingway, the giant Shakespeare collection that, you know, everyone has to have a giant Shakespeare Shakespeare collection. And then we have a British flag box because UK has a lot of great literature. That is it for our topsy-turvy bookshelf reorganization and tour. I will probably be doing another one of these very soon. So comment down below if you would like to see me reorganize my bookshelf to be a little bit more logical. And comment down below how you organize your books at home. I would love to know that. As always, I will see you down in the comments and in my next video. Bye.